Hey guys, it's Darla. Welcome back. Today we're going to be making some homemade horse cookies that your horse is absolutely going to love. Also, it's Kentucky Derby week and I know I'm excited for this weekend. I'm definitely going to be tuning in. I love everything about the Derby, the racing, the fashion, you know, the fancy hats, the fascinators. I'm not going to lie, as a thoroughbred owner and the owner of two yearling colts right now, it's a dream of mine to have one of them enter into that race one day. 2024 marks the Kentucky Derby's 150th anniversary and I'm going to try and guess what the odds would be of one of my colts making it into that race. Fun fact, only three-year-old horses can enter derbies. So that means in just two short years, one of my boys could be in that starting gate at Churchill Downs. So I'm preheating my oven to 300 degrees and the first thing I'm going to do is spray this mini muffin tin with a bit of cooking spray. This just helps the cookies get out a little bit easier. So you don't have to go crazy, just give it a light spray. Now here's a list of the ingredients that you're going to be needing to make these. You're going to need some shredded carrots, whole wheat all-purpose flour, wheat bran, molasses, whole flaxseed, applesauce, I like to use the unsweetened kind, and some whole rolled oats. Also, I'm just going to be using my trusty KitchenAid mixer with the paddle attachment. I start by grating four cups of carrots. Now there's really no rhyme or reason with it. You could put half carrots, half apples, or put a cup of your horse's sweet feed and use half the oats. This is a very adaptable and forgiving recipe, so you can experiment with different flavors that your horse may really enjoy. So once you have that done, now it's time to mix up your wet ingredients. Now I'm going to show you a little trick to keep your molasses from sticking. So you just want to take a little bit of cooking spray. That's all it takes and your molasses will come out really easily. Next, we're going to pour one cup of unsweetened applesauce, one cup of molasses. And do you see how easily that comes out using that little trick with the cooking spray? We're going to incorporate our carrots and just give it a quick stir and then throw it on the stand mixer. So I've got my mixer on at low speed. I'm sorry for the noise. We're going to add one and a half cups of oats, one and a half cups of wheat bran, one cup of flaxseed, and finally a half a cup of all-purpose whole wheat flour. So we're just going to let that mix just until it's incorporated. So now I'm just going to scrape down the sides of my bowl just to get all of the stuff that might be sticking. So the mixture is all incorporated. I'm going to give you a little close up. Looks a little bit gross, but um, it's going to have quite a bit of moisture on it. That's okay. Don't worry about that. It's going to bake out. So my oven has finished preheating and all I'm going to do is take one of these small cookie scoops and put one level scoop into each one of these compartments and I'm just going to press them down. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, horses are going to eat them. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to continue scooping all of this in and now it's time to talk a little derby. If you haven't been watching, I have two registered thoroughbred colts. They're both yearlings, so they're just over a year old. There are around 19,000 um, baby horses that are registered, 19,000 thoroughbred baby horses that are registered with the Jockey Club each year. And I think it's safe to say that the vast majority of those aren't meant to be racehorses, but not all of them make it to the races. No matter how well the breeding is, no matter how expensive, um, they're not all meant to run so therefore you can eliminate quite a few of that 19,000 right off the top to determine what your odds are for actually making it into the derby one day and from there maybe you have bred or purchased a horse that is talented it can win races but maybe it isn't talented enough to race at the caliber of races that these horses need to run in in order to qualify to earn the points needed to run in the Derby. Next, we have to consider and eliminate the female horses from that equation or most of them. 
can three-year-old fillies run in and win the Kentucky Derby or the Breeders' Cup or races like that? Of course they can. However, it doesn't happen very often. I think in the history of the Derby, there's only two or three fillies to have won that race. Most fillies, like our little baby Daisy here, and I'll put a little picture in because she's so cute and I just have to share her. If she t does turn out to one day be a great racehorse, she would probably qualify for the Oaks, which is the female equivalent to the Derby. I don't have the exact math, but if you take into consideration that we've started off with 19,000 horses and then done all of those eliminations, your odds are actually pretty good. I mean, of course, it's one of the har hardest races to win, but your chances of getting there are certainly better than, say, winning on a lotto ticket or something like that. So now my trays are all filled. I've gotten almost enough to make 48, and I have more than enough ingredients left over to make one more full batch of these. So I've just taken these out of the oven, and as you can see, they pop out very, very easily, which is awesome. Once they've cooled, you can take them and throw them into a Ziploc bag, toss them in your freezer. They're gonna stay there for a couple of months. Not that your horses will let them last that long. I'm gonna pack some of these up and we're gonna go take them to the horses and let's see what they think. Okay, time for the taste test. What do we think? Oh boy, do you like mama's cooking? Yeah. Okay, Tucker, your turn. Are you gonna sample Mama's cooking? Yeah, okay. As always, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting. I appreciate every single one of you. Take care, guys.